I'm so tired of people saying that it's just a movie, it's just a comic book, it's just a TV show. What? No, it's not. Stories are the building blocks of our culture, of our of ourselves, even of our own psychology. We are a product of the stories we tell ourselves about our own past and the experiences on a daily basis, but also the stories that we choose to spend time with. What types of values, our feelings, or whatever are they promoting? What types that we like to spend our time around? They're going to shape us. They're going to shape our personality and character, and they're going to shape our perception of the world and the acts and behaviors that we put out into the world. And people don't understand that. They go, it's just a movie. It's just this. I can, I can like and promote whatever I want. Well, of course you can, but you should pay attention to the responsibility that you have. Assume stories responsibly. As a, as a member of society, as a human being, responsibility to yourself. Consider the consequences. You need some balance. You need, you need some certain criteria that is going to make sure you're promoting the right kind of work. So at least have thought through the type of work that this or that story is going to do in our culture. And then make your own decision whether or not that's something you want to support. Assume stories responsibly. Consider the consequences. Assume stories responsibly. Hello, everyone. I am Professor Geek. Welcome back to the channel. <clears throat> and welcome to another Friday night stream. Got a good topic tonight. It's going to be fun. I thought my mic would unmute there automatically as it usually does, but I messed with it a little bit during the intro video, so apparently it did not. But we're good now. <clears throat> also thought I had coughed all of the gunk out of my uh, throat. I was mowing the lawn today and oh, so dry. Just everything was everywhere. So a uh, little allergies going on. But anyway, hope you're doing better. I will uh, manage to speak as coherently as possible. And uh, clearly, hopefully the voice won't get too cracked or anything. But welcome, folks. I see Michael Gonzalez was first. Congratulations on that. Lynn Green popped in to say hi. Said she'd catch the replay. Nathaniel's a Lowe's ball, as usual. Great to see you. Nathan, uh, Melissa Harris <clears throat> and Sons, great to see you there. Sarah Torin, Clegane, Schooner Tuna, T. Stoney, Alec Perdue, Elijah Brown, C.K. Chris Kent Sr. <laughs> that whole name there, I like that. <clears throat> uh, Horizon Talker. I think I said Elijah Brown. Big Al dropping in to say hi, though he's probably not here anymore. Big Al's too, he's too cool for me now. Big Al's too cool. He's, he's his own YouTube celebrity. He's got his own stuff going on. You know, he can't be waiting around and hanging out in the professor's chat, but that's okay. We love our big Al. So <clears throat> we are here to talk about some things tonight. I don't know exactly how long. I don't know. We've got two good topics and important topics, and I think we need to cover them. But it's kind of like it gets tiresome having to cover this stuff. It's, it's exactly like <clears throat> having to say yet again or explain yet again to the simpletons why no it's not uh, it's not silly to go ahead and judge something before it's even come out it hasn't even come out yet you haven't seen it how can you you know it's like those idiots you you, you can only you can just explain yourself so many so many times and some of it is that, that you've explained it to them and it just doesn't sink in they're they're going to hide behind that <clears throat> that uh, that safe little thin argument and then some of it is just that these silly little uh, beliefs are so pervasive and so widespread, so ubiquitous that, you know, they uh, there's always somebody trying to throw it at you. <clears throat> and as I've said, you know, it, it, you can't if you just watch it. And I've seen people. Oh, my gosh. I've seen people say, well, uh, you know, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to give it five apps. I'm going to give Masters of the Universe Revelation five episodes. And if it does what they say it's going to do, then, then I'm out of there. No one cares if you're out of there after you've watched it for five episodes. You've given it the ratings. You've given it your stamp of approval no matter what you might think afterwards. Nobody cares what you think afterwards, especially on something like Master of the Universe Revelation where you've got spin machine Kevin Smith who's going to say everything he can about those opening numbers and blah, blah, blah. And you got people saying, oh, I might just watch it because I'm curious. Or are this stupid, I'm going to take a bullet for you guys. No. The firing range is over there. No one needs to go walk in front of the guns and take a bullet. You're not taking a bullet for me because I wouldn't have gone there anyway. Everybody needs who, who realizes that it's going to be dumb needs to just hands off. Don't watch it. 
don't give it the numbers, don't give it the attention, don't give it that spin material for it. It's ridiculous, but people just can't. They're they're not going to. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised, heck. I know many of you here agree with me, but I wouldn't be surprised if many of the folks here just, you know, I'm going to watch it and see. Then don't tell me how you didn't like it. Don't tell me how I was right. You've already been part of the problem at that point. But, you know, that's that's not even a topic we had on deck for tonight. <laughs> but just as an example, uh, the, these other things that we're going to talk about tonight, it's kind of silly having to talk about them and having to explain them. But I, I did, you know, it came up last last week's stream and some people were asking about it because many of you who do agree with me about this are, are facing are facing these same arguments from people. So it's good for us to talk about it and and, and why <clears throat> why these woke ideologues are are constantly trying to lob these arguments at you and then how you how you just you know completely uh de uh depower them looks like megatron prime thank you very much sir for a ten dollar super chat right out of the gate always great to see it says netflix shira ruined hordak and made him like a beta male who was beat by katra he should be an evil godlike sorcerer or shape-shifting cyborg equal to his brother horde prime not some weak clone i agree i agree but what did you i mean you know seriously did anybody see those character designs of the new the Netflix She-Ra and think, well, oh, maybe good? <laughs> you know, I mean, you, you knew what there was going, especially if you knew anything about uh, the woman who's the showrunner. You know, coming off of her Lumberjanes comic book and stuff. And we're going to talk about that tonight. Why? You know, uh, we're going to start out with the fact that they can't they can't tell the difference between. or they don't want to tell the difference between fantasy and realism <clears throat> because they're coming from a place of agenda driven everything uh, owen lister for 499 says thought i'd give you the first super chat of the evening close close almost second but we'll very much appreciated anyway says while i work on coloring some art i did which is very rare of me to do uh oh cool yeah yeah you're not much of a colorist you say uh, that's uh kind of what you're talking about well uh, i think i've seen some of your coloring before it's pretty good so uh so yeah <clears throat> thank you for those appreciate it i do think we should start out with that that first topic though uh, people can't tell the difference between fantasy and reality because this is slightly different it's a, it's it's a still a matter of not being able to tell the difference or refusing to tell the difference but it's a um it, it, it's it's for slightly different reasons than the idealization versus sexualization that they seriously can't tell the difference between so wh where this where this thing comes from where this dichotomy or this problem comes from about fantasy versus reality is that I constantly get these kinds of comments on my videos. You know, I talked about in that first No Agenda Here video, you know, Kevin Smith's uh, wrong take on Masters of the Universe. And I talked about, I looked at the the character designs for Tila, even the designs which have her in her quote unquote traditional costume, which isn't traditional at all. They've, they've covered it up. They've done this puritanical woke thing where they have to make, you know, make sure we've got a flap covering her rear because we can't see anything untoward there. When did the when did the the left woke ideologues become Puritans? Like it wasn't that usually the other way around, but no, that's that's what they are now. We'll talk about that later. And I talked about how uh, you know even though the colors are right or whatever, look at her her body design. They have made sure to only accentuate the same parts of her body that are accentuated on He Man, because the 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 agenda there is there's no difference between a man and a woman. Uh, don't you dare show us something like an hourglass figure because that would symbolize and signify the iconic feminine. And that's what Tila is. She's a warrior. She's a she-warrior, no, no, no doubt, and, and a very formidable, very powerful warrior. But her methods of her warrioring are feminine. They come across as feminine. That's, that's what she's supposed to be, the, the feminine force on the battlefield. Absolutely. And there are different types of feminine. She's the warrior feminine, whereas somebody like the sorceress is more of the nurturing, kind of wise, you know, feminine. And, and we'll get to those. But uh, but they tried. They showed that. They showed that, you know, in the character designs. And the comments I got refused to th refused to acknowledge that this is a cartoon. <clears throat> and they started in with the "You're so stupid." Uh, so so everybody has to look. So everybody has to. Every woman out there has to have an hourglass figure. Is that what it is? Or or She's a warrior. Her arms would be ripped. You know, she does all this this work and working out. She would look like that. She would look like that. Well, first of all, there, there are problems with those arguments right away. 
and and, uh, and maybe we'll look at those first and then we'll get to the basic argument there. But the first one is no one's saying that every woman has to have an hourglass figure. We are talking on the symbolic level. When you're in a cartoon, when you're dealing with idealized forms and whatnot, with the, the symbolic, it's just fantasy, not reality. Secondly, no, not every warrior woman. I mean, you, go, go look at women in the army or women on the police force or whatever. They don't all look like Ronda Rousey. You know, that, that's not something that they just would have to look like or anything. It's, it's from an agenda. They want to show no difference between men and women, no difference between men and women. Then I receive comments which say, I, I've, I've been called racist a number of times, just flat out racist, because I didn't like the cross uh, racial uh, casting of uh, Lieutenant Andra, you know, from, from she's from a character, a character from the car comics and whatnot. Uh, I think she she might have been in the 2002 series, but uh, but they cross racially cast her as black because got to have that diversity, you know. Um, and I talked about that, how that's that's silly. This is from a you know, there's already some diversity built into the stories. If you want more then you create new characters, you stop cross racially casting established characters. But also the fact that you are dealing with a, a mythos here that draws from both Gaelic and Germanic sources. Not a lot of Africans up there in the Gaelic Germanic. Uh, ancient mythic times, not a lot of Asians up there, not a lot of so forth and so on. Doesn't mean they can't be in there. You know, they are there. Claptrap, I think, is is uh, is in the, the new one cartoon as well. I don't know if they have Jitsu or not. But uh, but no, that's not good enough. And, and I was a racist for saying that. And then um, you know, what's wrong with wanting to see myself, uh, per, you know, represented on the screen? Well, Nothing's wrong with wanting to see yourself represented on the screen in general. Everything's wrong with you wanting to see yourself represented in any given incarnation. Is it right for me to complain that the Black Panther movie only had one white guy? Come on. You didn't have one white hero. You couldn't have more. I need to see myself represent. No, that's stupid. That's stupid. The movie was set in Africa. That's what it was. You, you look at these, these, uh, these franchises and where they come from and what the kind of mythologies and what kind of backgrounds they're, they're coming from. Now, the problem that the woke ideologue will say is, well, there's not enough. There's not enough, uh, you know, representations of like an African. Okay. Then go write them. They don't want to do that. That means they have to work. That means they have to actually write good stories with characters that actually resonate with people to draw them in and make the story stick in our culture and mythology. They should do that, right? We, I would love to have more African-based mythic tales or, or epic fantasy tales, you know, from Africa and whatnot. That'd be wonderful. You know, African, um, you know, lineage or, or, or um, influence in there. That'd be amazing to have. They don't want to do that because they don't actually know how to write good stories. They're, they're not concerned with that. They just want to put the agenda there. And the shortcut is to strip away, uh, take the characters that you already know and love and, and slap the black sticker on it, you know, make up oh, Captain America's a black man. Now up oh, Thor's a woman now up, oh, you know, they don't want to do the work. So that's what they're doing. Now, let me get to the super chat here and then I'll tell you wh what that has to do with fantasy and reality. Uh, thank you for Baptist 702 for 999 says ideologues refuse to accept nuance because their beliefs and ideologies are questioned and fall apart at the fundamental level. This sparks a visceral response. You're right, you're right. And I like the way you put that, that yeah, they don't, um, if you give them logic, if you show them why, hey, this is actually wrong, they respond with anger, rage, you're canceled, you're a racist. You know, they throw around those words because they don't have an argument for you. They just they just rather lob insults at you. You know, it's, it's the ad hominem fallacy. Attack the person instead of the argument. Um, Kieran Henry for nine ninety nine. Oh, thank you very much. Appreciate that. So did you see the last Loki episode? Boring and stupid. No, I refuse to watch any of the Loki series because, uh, I mean, from the flat out reason that I do not want to spend any time in the current Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's a horrible universe. The things that they've established that are going on, I, I, why would I want to spend any time there? And plus, uh, you know, you say it's stupid and boring. I totally believe you uh, because I saw the, the, the premise. You know, you've got Loki who's had a wonderful character arc of redemption even really beautiful character arc throughout all the films right up into the beginning of uh or actually through through infinity war rather but uh that was that was great but now we need him back and we need a villain so we'll just kind of uh retcon different different loki from a different time period and you know they're playing the timey wimey game still 
like they should have learned their lesson from Endgame, right? And everybody's thinking that's stupid, the stupid time travel nonsense they did in that movie. But they're still playing with that. They're still they're doubling down on it, right? Because that's what ideologues do. They double down on it. When you call BS on something and say, hey, that doesn't make any sense and that doesn't work. They cannot, they cannot, cannot ever, ever admit that they are wrong. Ever. They will double down on it. Look what that Marvel did with Captain America becoming a Nazi in the comic books. Everybody hated it. The, the sales went down. They doubled down on it and doubled down on it. They would have pushed that, I think, throughout the entire Trump presidency had not the the uh, the whole KKK thing happened in Charlottesville. And then suddenly like, oh, maybe we should kind of back off this a little bit. And then they backed off of it, but it was a stupid way. It was like still the Captain America, you know, and love, according to Marvel continuity, was always a Nazi. You know, that that's that's dumb how they did that. Uh, Phoenix Halcyon for five dollars says you and I are wearing the exact same shirt today. Always great to hear you. You champion classic masculinity and femininity. The world needs more of it. Thank you very much, Phoenix Halcyon. I appreciate that and appreciate you and the super chat very much. Yeah, this is a cool shirt. The uh, I like the the. Uh, you know, the black solar suit a little bit, but it's got like the, the sports stripes on the arms. I don't know. Cool shirt, though. So what does all this have to do with fantasy versus reality? They can't understand or accept that something like He-Man, a cartoon for children, is fantasy. They are the, the, the very foundation, the fundamental first step in the ideology that they have, have put on to their thinking. And like I said last time, th these are um, these might be intelligent people otherwise. You know, I've known some, you know, especially this is why it comes from academia. Very otherwise intelligent people, but they, they, they dumb themselves down. They become pretty stupid because they put this ideology on and it's like blinders. They're not allowing themselves to see the whole story. They start from this foundational stone of the fiction, the stories, need to contribute to the perfect world that I want to see around me. So if they want to see a world of body positivity around them and no one ever being uh, encouraged to have a healthier body or whatever, well, then the way we do that is we start with the story. We start with the mythology and we go in there and, and, uh, and it's pretty insidious because it's, you know, on some level of how the cause and effect works, it's right. I mean, you know, uh, mythologies do have an effect on us. It'll never have the effect they want it to. But they start from that. So, so even thinking of something like He-Man, I mean, come on, He-Man, a children's cartoon, which became more through the comics and in the 2002 series and all of that. But it's clearly, clearly it's fantasy. It's fantasy. So these stupid comments like, well, she would have big arms because she would be doing. I don't care. First of all, I doubt that. I don't think that's naturally what she would have in a realistic sense. But stop bringing realism to your argument. This is fantasy. It's like the whole, uh, it's not realistic that Superman would do X, Y, and Z. It's not realistic that he'd fly around with a cape on and be impenetrable to bullets either. You know what? It's fantasy. Stop it. Stop with this incessant need for everything to be real. Part of it is both in terms of the woke ideologues and in terms of people who just want to deconstruct everything. Part of it is that I need to bring down that standard. I don't want to have to, I don't want to be shown a higher standard that I have to live up to. You know, whether that's, uh, a, a, a Zack Snyder Superman fan, you know, who like, well, I can relate to his Superman. Well, yeah, because he's a horrible person. Sure, you can relate to him. There's no good or nobility there. There's a little bit. Well, that's easy to achieve. Anybody can achieve that. Uh, he's no standard for you. Of course, you want it, you know, easier to relate to because you don't have to raise yourself up. You don't have to be better. It doesn't tell you to be better. And the same thing with like the woke ideologues, you know, like body positivity, for example, that I mentioned. We don't have to be told that we need to work on our bodies to, to be beautiful and attractive and healthy. No, no, let's just, let's just make sure that everybody thinks that being 500 pounds overweight is beautiful. No, it's not the way this works, but that's what they, 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 they got this, the, the fundamental foundational stone of their ideology is that they want to see the world they want to see around them needs to be reflected in, in our fiction. So even something like He-Man, come on, it's a children's cartoon. And I've heard people say it's so unrealistic what she looked like in the filmation. It's so stupid. It's so unrealistic. Um, where do you get that it's supposed to be realistic? It's about a world of sorcery and super science takes place on a, myth, a fictional planet of Eternia. There's a magic sword. There's a talking tiger. <laughs> where do you get off claiming that there should be realism in any of this? It's just the, the the notion that they would try to argue that 
They can't tell. And and you can try to argue this and you try to show them and point this out. And they just it's just like you're talking to a wall. It'll just go right over their heads. Well, makes sense that she would have big arms because she's a Oh my gosh, did you hear anything I just said? No, because they're programmed. You know, one of the words for them, you know, it used to be SJWs, now kind of woke is in fashion, but I really like when they were called NBC NPCs because that really is, they they don't think for themselves. NPCs in terms of like a non-playable character in a video game who, who has no cognition, they're pre-programmed. These are the responses. If someone disagrees with them, these are the ists and isms that they're supposed to lob into their face. You know, this is, they, they, uh, they, they, they check Twitter every so often for their new programming. Who are we supposed to hate this week? Who are we supposed to cancel and so forth? No, no, they, they don't think for themselves. They truly are NPCs. I wish that would come back around actually. But, uh, but ideologues is a good term for, because that's just a, 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 that's a timeless term. If you're an ideologue, it doesn't mean no matter what your ideology is. It means that you've allowed, you've given over your intellect. You've given over everything about your identity and your, uh, cognitive abilities over to this prepackaged ideology. And, and that's where, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's cultic. It's very much like a cult. You know, if you, you look at a cult that has, uh, these, they've got built in rules and built in, uh, defenses against anybody who might pick apart the beliefs or, or try to call out that it's a cult. They've got built in defenses that they will pre program into their followers. That's what ideology is. It's like a cult. It doesn't have the, um, I mean, it does have, a, it's, it's a little bit more loose in hierarchy and that kind of thing, but uh, it, it's just, it's, it's, it's disgusting too. I mean, why would you want to be an ideologue? They will eat their own. They, there's no, it's like being a Sith. <laughs> being an ideologue is like being a Sith. There's, there's no uh, people standing by you. There's nothing like that. Uh, you know, you could be eaten in a heartbeat if, if you just dared have the wrong response or, or whatever, you know, to somebody on Twitter. It's, it's ridiculous. Got a super chat incoming here. Five dollars. Thank you very much from Jay Dean. Appreciate that. Says, do you think all of this rubbish actually serves to bring about a renaissance of the old stories, like how people are running to get older comics? Well, that's the that's what we're trying to bring to, to get to come out of this, right? And, and for many of us, like you and me, and my, you know, for many of us, that is it is what's happening. So it's um. You know, we are either trying to dig out the old comics and stick with those or the old cartoons, you know, uh, Sound Engraver points out a great and made a great point the other night when we were talking. The, 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 the silly nostalgia draw for Masters of the, of the Universe Revelations. Oh, people, I got to give it a chance because it's just what I loved as a kid. And oh, I saw the, the images in the trailer and oh, my gosh. If you need nostalgia, guys. You can watch all of the episodes of Master of the Universe for free on YouTube. How is that not good enough anymore? If you truly loved what it was for what it was for its own sake, then watching that still should be enough. Now, it, I mean, I would always love more stories to be told in that vein, but this is the key. So the people who are going after it, oh, because this is nostalgia like I loved, they don't really love He-Man. They don't really love the stories. They want to feel what it felt like as a kid and all that kind of nonsense. Uh, Sound Engraver is actually developing a really cool live stream or topical. I don't know if she's going to do a video or a live stream. It depends on schedule, I think. But uh, I'll leave that to her because she's, she's got some really cool ideas on that. And it all makes sense. So they can't tell the difference between fantasy and reality. And, and these two things, these two things kind of uh, overlap a little bit. I kind of almost went into the idealization versus sexualization a little bit uh, at one point. <laughs> you know, talking about the fantasy versus reality. A lot of people, <laughs> some people have tried to tell me, because I said, I pointed out in, in my videos on He-Man that classic Tila, filmation Tila is not in any way sexualized. She's not, she's not sexualized. She's idealized. And they, they just, they, they blew up at that. How can you say she's not sexualized? Uh, she's always being captured and, and, and bondage and whatnot. No. Sweetheart, that's your Google image search that found that. Have you watched the series? Occasionally she's captured, but she's never in any kind of little sex kitten pose or anything like that. They What makes them think it's, it's sexualized is that these are idealized physical forms, both the men and the women. You know, they were doing rotoscoping for the animation. They actually brought bodybuilders in, male and female. They brought bodybuilders in. They took the... Uh, the film you know, or the pictures for, for uh, references, they, they filmed them, you know, for rotoscoping purposes. 
th that's what these are completely idealized forms, you know, uh, bodybuilders, people who work their bodies to that pinnacle of, of uh, muscular, you know, perfection in that sense. That's what they're showing. So people got all up in arms too. And it's funny how, again, it used to be, uh, yeah, another cartoon I really enjoy is Spider-Man and his amazing friends. And if you watch any kind of, uh, you know, documentaries about that, it's funny. Firestar, Firestar in the first season, whenever she was, you were seeing her from the back, you would see a little bit of the butt crack on her suit there, right? And the artists were saying, this is not, we're not like, oh, we get off on seeing her butt crack. No, that's silly. It's there because they're they're drawing the, the perfect idealized physical form. And when with her suit kind of being monochromatic like that, it kind of looks silly. It looks flat. They, they had to provide some sort of depth. Yes, a booty, a, a butt, if you will. But just in the same way that they had to provide, you know, arm contours or a breast contour gasp, you know, because this is supposed to be an idealized form. And, and, the, and the, the Puritans of the day couldn't handle that, you know, so the second season they, they had to remove all the butt cracks, you know, oh my gosh, they were doing it with Spider-Man too. It's just that his suit wasn't uh, monochromatic, you know, in, in terms of that. So, so you couldn't, uh, couldn't tell as much, but that was, that was the, the, the extreme crazy uh, censorship puritanical right wing on that respect, right? Extremist there. Now it's flipped. Now the wokes want to censor everything. Now the wokes need to cover her up, cover her up because it's sexualization. If you don't, and that, no, it's not. Now, look, there's there's a problem. There's a problem with sexualization and, and objectification. Now, you can have not have a problem with it if you want. Uh, you know, I've come to believe there's a problem with it myself in my own religious beliefs. But even if you don't think there's a problem with it in general and other characters, you should realize that there are certain characters in which you don't do that with. So, like, for example, when I put the um, the thumbnail, I'll bring it back here. In that picture, the second one from the right. That's not Tila. That is in no way Tila. That's some artist. I don't even know the name of the artist. Uh, just, you, you, you Google Tila image search and you'll find a bunch of people you know, doing these kinds of things. That's not her. That's that's a Tila that only He-Man should ever see. OK, <laughs> that's that's an intimate Tila. That's a moment between her and He-Man. That's that. This is not her. She did a children's cartoon or whatever. That should not be done. And now you're seeing the same amount of skin on her there as you are in the two pictures to the left. But in that picture, she's submissive, she's inviting, she's alluring, she's being seductive, right? She's inviting you to look at her with a, a, a motive of what do I want to use her for, right? What do I, that's where the objectification comes in. That turns me on is what they want to hear from the, from the audience there. Um, you know, what do you want to use her for, basically, is what's inviting you like that. Now, even if you're okay with that kind of art in general, you should realize that there are certain characters and certain icons which should never be portrayed like that. Let me put it in a different context. You should never ever see Superman, an image of Superman picking his nose. You should never see an image of, of, uh, of He-Man picking a wedgie out of his fur, you know, trunks there. That's just, that's, that's, that's not, that's an improper, a disrespectful handling of the specific symbol that those characters are, are the specific work that those symbols do in our culture and in our consciousness. Superman, He-Man, they're aspirational heroes. They're there to inspire. Now, that's not to say that you can't, I mean, I wouldn't want to look at it, but you can't go pick up a mad magazine or something and see characters picking their noses or whatever, you know? Um, fine, if that's your thing. But the idea is that you don't do that with certain icons. It's a, it's a disrespect. It's disrespect, but let me, let me try and put it a different way. It's, it's counterproductive to the work that they're supposed to do in our society. It's, it's an iconoclast uh, motivation. It's, an, um, it's, a, uh, it's a deconstruction. It's a deconstruction. You know, so just like you should never see Superman kill. Well, that, that's the same thing. You should never see a character like Tila or Wonder Woman sexualized wonder woman's another one that they can't tell this difference between they just uh oh they, they just wring their hands all over the place because oh wonder woman's old costume is so problematic oh my gosh it's just you know i i did a video that you should go check out if you haven't seen it it's called wonder woman stop screwing with the costume and i talk about how her costume is beautifully symbolic every piece of it is made to uh i make iconic that idealized feminine form it's she should be showing off her body in that respect in terms of the idealized feminine form not in terms of inviting you to to want to use her for your own sexual gratification no 
So you will see images sometimes, fan art, or sometimes they even make it into the comics, and that's that's a problem. They shouldn't, where you've got them putting her in like a little sex kitten pose or something, or uh, you know, and, and she started out with the whole bondage thing with uh with Marston, but even that, even though there was yeah, there's a sexual thrill there ingrained in his his myth his uh his philosophy, it's still more of a of a liberation. It, it's it's breaking free of those chains, and that was all part of a greater philosophy. But they can't they can't make that differentiation. I see uh my lovely sound engraver says uh bonus stream July 5th on nostalgia and nihilism. Awesome. So sound engraver, my dear sound engraver has uh decided to to take a break from live streams on Monday night, but she's got a uh, bonus stream coming this this July 5th on the Monday night. So she will be back for a special stream. And that's the one where she's going to talk about nostalgia and nihilism, the, 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 what I was alluding to a little bit. And she's got some really cool ideas on it. I definitely recommend you guys uh, subscribe to her and, and come back for that. So the woke ideologues would say, when I'm talking about the idealized feminine or masculine form, the idealized body in these types of stories, whether it's He-Man or comic books or whatever. This is where it overlaps with they can't tell the difference between fantasy and reality. Well, what's wrong with having characters look a little more like this or that? Well, here's what's wrong with it. You're crashing your realism, your wanted realism into fantasy. And those two genres don't mix. If they mix in any given time, it's for a specific reason. It's for like a deconstruction, like the, the Jupiter's legacy kind of thing or whatever, you know, um, or what Watchmen originally was before it went on to, to, you know, its influence just kind of kill comics for a while. It, it's not supposed to be the norm. What they don't understand is the, is the, the genre, the time tested, the age old methods and, 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 uh, and genre of mythic fantasy. And I'll say more about that in a second, but I've got a super chat from Alec Purdue. $10, sir. Thank you very much. It says, I mentioned this before, but what about fight skirts? I always thought they added an element of femininity to characters like the Pink Ranger, Sailor Moon, and Rebirth Wonder Woman. I didn't like it on Rebirth Wonder Woman because symbolically her, her suit was so powerful and profound with the actual trunks as a bottom. But in skirts in general, no. I mean, She-Ra, you know, classic She-Ra, the real She-Ra wears a skirt without any little shorts underneath or whatever. Yeah, skirt, there's nothing wrong with a skirt. Um, there's nothing wrong with a battle skirt, you know, if, if that's key to the character or whatever. No, nothing wrong with a skirt in general. I, I have a problem with with putting on a skirt, putting a skirt on a um, a character who, who doesn't have one for puritanical woke reasons, right? So when you see that image, uh, of Tila where they have to, uh, where they're trying to do her like, you know, traditional garb or whatever. I got that little flap down that comes down around her bum because they think that's just horrible that you could see her butt crack lining through her, through her costume. Oh, that's, it's so impractical. How many times did you hear that? Uh, the many times they tried to put Wonder Woman in pants throughout the years. That's so impractical. Gloria Steinem of all people, you know, the, the, uh, the, the rabid second wave feminist, you know, had said that that's so stupid. That's telling you, that's telling people that pants symbolize power she says tell that to a spartan warrior tell that to a sumo wrestler pants don't mean strength and power they're just obsessed with it they're obsessed they can't have wonder woman running up because she's showing too much skin they're puritans all of a sudden they're they're, they're censorship they're, they've become the thing they hated right so that's my problem when i have uh nothing about against skirts in general it's when you've got the a, a skirt placed over for like a censorship reason over a character who didn't previously have it. Now they just can't conceive of the need to have idealized physical forms. They think that that's just a social construction, right? This is the silly notion that they have. Everything's a social gender is a social construction. Uh, you know, these characters looking like that's a social. Have you people ever taken a, a, a basic history course there's no, it's not a random choice that superheroes in comic books and then heroes in cartoons. It's not a random choice. It's not the patriarchy that decided, oh, we need to have these characters portrayed in an idealized human form. Look back at our history. We have always been portraying our epic heroes in idealized physical forms. Yes, the, the nature of that idealized form varies to a certain degree based on the culture and the time period. 
but we are here in America as, as, a, as a coming down the lineage from Western civilization. America in particular draws, uh, you know, it, it is founding and it's more than just the government. It, it's also the, the culture. I mean, we drew inspiration from neoclassicism and, and Greek mythology in general. You know, Greek is the seat of Western mythology, you know, it going from Greek uh, civilization to Rome. And that's the art, the myth, the architecture and everything. That's why anytime you go to a federal building in the United States, you see the big columns. Usually, you know, uh, think, think about the, the buildings of Washington, D.C., those are we were made in neoclassical architecture, so we owe a debt to to ancient Greece, to Rome and ancient Greece, and Rome was was owing its own debt to to, to Greece as well in terms of uh, art, uh, government styles, but mythology as well. Go Google some some uh, Greek ancient Greek art of uh, sculptures of heroes like uh, like Heracles. Uh, um, Theseus and all these heroes or our reliefs, Metope reliefs on the Parthenon or whatever. They are idealized forms. In fact, many times they're actually naked, naked, not in how realism is that, right? You know, it's just so, you know, Hercules would fight the, the lion of a uh, lion, the meat, the meat, the median lion. He'd really fight a lion naked. That's so stupid. That's a, no, no one said that back then because they understood, they got it. They weren't a stupid woke ideologue and they understood that the point here was to see the perfection of the physical form and strength against this, this monstrous nature, like the Nemedian lion. Uh, I think I'm saying that right. Nemedian lion. <laughs> I'm mixing it up with Nemoidians from Star Wars is the problem. <laughs> but uh, if I'm getting that wrong, you can look it up. But, um, and then if you, you know, look at classic art, Hercules was often, or Heracles was often depicted wearing the skin of that lion uh, naked otherwise, and just wearing the skin down his back or whatever. That doesn't mean that they actually thought Heracles went around naked, you know, um, in their stories or whatever, but they would depict him as such because the point is, let's show the, the, the ideal, you know, especially in Greek mythology, you know, wanting that golden mean, wanting that idealized form. We want to show what, what the perfect, what the perfection is. You don't, <laughs> why do you need to see the imperfection in your stories or in your art? I can go out my door and see imperfections all around me. Heck, I can look in the mirror and see imperfections. I mean, that, why do we want that? That that's not that's not what we should be aspiring to. Whether it's in in physical form or moral form, right? In terms of the morality, but this is what the woke ideologues want to do. They want to get rid of any idea that we should have to change ourselves, any idea that we should have to aspire to. Because what is the woke ideology? The woke ideology is not that you should have to better yourself. You shouldn't have to work for anything. You shouldn't have to try to be better. If you're lucky enough, all you need to do is scrounge around and try to find ways in which you can punch some holes on your victim card. And if you're lucky enough to have a few of those holes punched, well, then everything bad that ever happened to you is somebody else's fault, and it's their privilege, and you are already amazing, and you should just already be able to succeed. That's what they want to reflect in mythology because that's what they want to happen to them in real life. And on some level, they're creating a system. They're creating a, a system of publishing in Hollywood where you fail upwards, right? How does J.J. Abrams keep getting work? I have never understand this. Uh, you know, in the comic world, Marvel Comics, right? How do these characters, th these people still get work when their runs are just so horrid? How's Nick Spencer still writing comics? Well, it's because he puts the right ideologue nonsense in his comics and that's all they want that's all they care about we talked about it before it's not a business i mean it should be but it's not they're not running it um in terms of a business they just the, getting the agenda out is is limitlessly more important to them than than making money so they will try and try and try to to bring down that standard to treat fantasy as though it's realism to treat idealization as though it's sexualization and we should be fighting against that at every point. Our women need to be covered and they need to look like men. That is ridiculous. And then this brings us to the other um, problem here, which I've talked about in some other videos, how they don't believe, or they believe there's a big difference between sex and gender. No, you can be biologically one or the other. And they're even kind of defeating themselves on that with the whole transgender movement. No, no. Even if you're bi biologically one way, you can choose to be whatever you want, you know? This kind of silly, uh, silly nonsense. Let me uh, hit up a super chat here too. Uh, Owen Lister for nine ninety nine. Thank you very much, sir. Says an update on my coloring. Made some drawings of superheroes I made up. Reaper Grim, 
Aeneas. Oh, cool, Aeneas. Uh, I like the name there. Flyboy, the Star Spangled Rocket, the American Way. I like those names. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool names there. And then another super chat for $5. Thank you very much from Heavy Hard Drive. So the U.S. government is pushing for gender neutral terminology. No more amen or airmen, cockpit, or man-made terms. Uh, how long before it hits popular comics? Oh, it's already in there. It's already in there. And that neutral language is ridiculous. Don't use it. If you don't believe in it, refuse to use it. I refuse to even use... Um, what's I'm trying to think of an example, but, but, you know, it, traditionally, if you had a mixed, uh, if, if, a, if the reference of a pronoun could be a man or a woman, you would default use his or him or whatever, uh, you know, you would default to, or if, you know, you're talking about, um, all of men, you know, well, yeah, you mean women in that too, but you would say all of man. No, that's not right. That's sexist. Oh my gosh. They, they have the language, they have to get all this nonsense. I remember being in this class uh, that we had to take before we could teach writing, you know, in my graduate assistantship, you know, we had to have this whole unit on the politics and the sexism of language and how it's so bad. And, and uh, it's funny, the, the, the student that was leading, you know, we actually had to like pick a section, a segment of the class to lead. And the student that was leading that one wanted everybody around the table to, to tell what they thought about uh, you know, whether or not language, it was a problem, you know, uh, with this sexualized language or whatever, um, gender language. And he specifically started with the person sitting next to me and went around so he wouldn't get to me. He knew, he knew I was going to drop some knowledge on them, but I raised my hand anyway. I said, look, this is, these are words. They mean what you want them to mean. And I said, think about it in the military In the military. If you have a superior officer, that superior officer is, sir, doesn't matter if it's a man or a woman. If you hear somebody say, sir, in the military, that just means superior officer. It doesn't necessarily mean man or a woman. And uh, the, the teacher didn't even believe me. She had to go look that up or whatever, you know, does not compute, doesn't fit my ideology. You know, you're just a sexist, uh, misogynist, whatever, you know, that they, they don't, they don't get it. They don't, um, they don't conceive of, of rational truth. So, so the idea that you should have an iconic masculine and iconic feminine and that, gasp, boys should actually try to strive toward an iconic masculine and girls should actually try to strive toward an iconic feminine. That doesn't mean that, that they have to look like them physically. All right. I'm never going to look like He-Man. I knew as a child watching He-Man that I was never going to look like He-Man. Now, I mean, I, I don't know if I could have done it or not, but I could have chosen the path of bodybuilding or something if that's something I wanted or whatever. But the point there is to, to go for after his character. And part of that character is to make sure that I'm taking care of my body reasonably well as best I can. Yes. In real life, we have all different types of body styles. Uh, there's not just, you know, anybody who doesn't look like She-Ra or He-Man isn't just, oh, that's because they're not trying hard enough. No, people are born with all different types of body shapes and, and, and conditions or whatever. Sure. But symbolically, you see a character like the traditional Filmation She-Ra or Filmation uh, He-Man or Filmation Teela or whatever. And that cues to you, that's that's an idealization. It's a perfection. Now, if you're logical, you'll see idealization there and realize, okay, that's an idealization. Most people aren't going to be looking like that out in the world. That's why this whole notion about, oh, Barbie, was so problematic for little girls. They were just being told that they had to be, look like that. That's the stupidest, ridiculous argument ever. I love that meme that talks about, uh, it, it's got a picture of Barbie. It's like, this is Barbie. It's like a classic Barbie, you know, who's uh, putting, you know, um, false body norms, you know, into our young girl's head and blah, blah, blah. And it's so it's causing so many problems for our young girls. And then the other side of the meme is, oh yeah, and this is He-Man. You know, it didn't cause any problems for young boys. No, that's stupid because you, you, you recognize if they allow you, if they allow the culture to be as it should, that our, our, our epic heroes are idealized, then you know that going in. So you're not expecting, oh, well, why isn't why don't everybody that walks around me at the mall look like they do on Eternia? Because that's fantasy. That's an idealized form. You know that. Even as a child, you get that. You get that. But they're they're trying to invent this world in which uh, they're claiming that no, that's just not obvious. It's hurting so many people and blah blah blah. And they're trying to reinvent as much as they try to stick to science or claim that they're they're being scientific or whatever. They'll deny science in a heartbeat as soon as it as it goes against their um their agenda. There's this, um, one of the big, you know, if you're, if you're learning critical theory, 
in, in uh, college, one of the big dichotomies they'll tell you is that they want you to think that everything's socially constructed. No, everything. So if you don't believe that everything's socially constructed, well, then you're an evil essentialist. And if you think there's an essential nature to people and things and whatnot, well, then you might as well be a Nazi because the Nazis were essentialists because they thought Jews were essentially bad. Really? Really? You're going to go with the, the, the worst example of, of an essentialist mindset and try to paint everything essentialist like that. And they did, that was absolutely what they did. Then you learn about, you get a little bit deeper into their cult, you know, and you start to learn a little bit more about um, critical theory and, and the social constructionist tact doesn't work when they're trying to push their, their feminist post-colonial Marxist, you know, those kinds of theories, because what it, what is, what are those theories saying that it's essentially good for women to be portrayed like this and not like that. You know, they, the everything socially constructed allows for total moral relativism, but then they want to push what they want to be their morals. So this is what they actually say. It's actually on the books. Theorists have said, well, we have to use strategic essentialism, strategic essentialism. You know, we're not essentialists, but we just use a little bit of it to, to accomplish our goals in this way, but then we leave it alone. We're not really the logic just crumbles and falls down around these people at every step, every direction they turn, which is why they devolve into, into name calling, which is why they devolve into cancel culture. These are all defenses. They have no logic. They have no argument or ground to stand on when it comes to it. So they devolve into, you know, well, you're a racist, you're a misogynist, you know, well, that's, um, you know, this whole critical, critical race theory thing. Well, every, if you're white, you're a racist. And if you don't think you're a racist, well, that proves you're a racist. No, no. That is the stupidest thing anybody's ever said. This idea of systematic racism and all this, this nonsense. It, it was the most disgusting thing in the world for me when, when the whole Black Lives Matter movement started. And, and this is a great example of how they hide behind illogic. Now, the Black Lives Matter specific movement, okay, the, the actual organized political movement, and it is political. They talked about on their website how they are trying to subvert the, the 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 natural traditional family. I mean, it was far more than just hey, we should we should take black lives seriously. Well, of course we should take black lives seriously. Yes, we should take all lives seriously. And yes, that includes black people. And if there's racism in, in some place, so well, yeah, you speak out against it, sure. But they tried it. This is the same thing that feminists do. Uh, Anytime you start to pin down their argument that's bad or you say something bad about feminism, they come in with this nonsense. Well, I mean, don't you believe that men and women should be treated equally? Well, congratulations, you're a feminist. No, no, sweetheart. That's not what feminism is. Stop pretending. Stop insulting and, and, and manipulating language to try and hide behind that. That has never been what feminism is for the longest time. Uh, way back when, first wave, when it was something like that, women just kind of wanting the right to vote and whatnot, they didn't even call themselves feminists. So, so this is this part of this political agenda where they're trying to weaponize language and trying to manipulate it and twist it around. And as soon as you use their own tactics against them, well, then they'll just, oh, it doesn't mean that now. Now it means this. Now it blah, blah, blah. All this kind of nonsense. So, uh, oh, no, no, we're not being political. We just we just believe that the black lives, oh, I believe black lives. What's wrong with saying all lives matter then? Because no, no, you're not. You're not focusing on us and the victimhood that we want you to see. And I, and I would see people. Uh, well-meaning people who were just um, afraid, afraid to speak out against the political aspect of this movement. Speak out against racism, sure. Speak out against racism all you want. It's evil. It should be spoken out against. But no, you had to do it the right way that matched the politics and the agenda of this political movement that was trying to kind of float under the guise of just being against racism. And so you had well-meaning people, you know, coming out, um, you know, we're listening right now. We're just being, you know... It, as a white heterosexual male, all you can do is just shut up. You can't say a word. You just just listen. It's like when the hashtag Me Too movement happened. And um, occasionally some men on Twitter or whatnot or anywhere would, would chime in and talk about because that movement was about sexual harassment. So occasionally you'd have men, maybe a gay man or something like that, talk about how they've actually been harassed or whatever. Feminists lost their cookies. They could not handle it. Don't you dare. No. You men are not a victim. No, you just sit down, you shut up, and you listen to us talk about how you've hurt us. And and you just, and then you have idiots like that comic book writer who's like, I'll never stop apologizing for my masculinity. And, and the idiot actually said, it was said, if you have a penis, you have the disease. 
you deserve every bit of idiocy that's going through your brain right now to, to, to actually think that. And this is what ideology does. First, it, it sits over your brain and it doesn't let you think to your actual natural capacity. It, it puts blinders on you. Nope. Shuts down that line of reasoning. Shuts down that line of reasoning. This is our prepackaged ideology that you're supposed to think in and nothing else. Nothing else. And then you see people, once they start going and thinking in that, in that narrow ideology, then they start they start devolving and they can't even think straight within that. They, 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 they can't even reason anymore that they start to hate themselves or whatever. You either, you either get to be a victim or you, you constantly apologize for yourself. That's, that's what woke ideology is now. Um, Demon, D, so I want to pronounce this right. Dimagini, Dimagini. Sorry, I had to look at it. I kept wanting to say Dimanji, but no, Dimagini for $2. Thank you very much. It's great channel. Uh, CRT is critical race theory, clown foolery. Yes, absolutely. It is. It's, it's ridiculous. Um, I don't know if they're really going to be pushing it in the schools yet or whatever, but, but it's nonsense. The whole ask what somebody's pronouns are thing is nonsense. It's nonsense. No, there, there are, there are two genders. <gasps> How can you say that? There are two genders. That's it. Two genders. And, and they would say, well, how dare you? You think that, uh, that that every man needs to be like like this and every woman needs to be like that. No, stop using the language. Stop weaponizing the language. That doesn't mean that in order to be masculine, every man has to like lifting heavy things and playing football and rah, 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 whatever. I hate that stuff. You know me. No, but it does mean that there's a basic masculine genius and a basic feminine genius. And, and as I've said before in my previous video, that the, the masculine genius is to serve. It is to protect. You use your strength to protect, to 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 be a um, to be a sheepdog, as it were, you know, against all the wolves, the men that won't use their strength, you know, correctly. Uh, feminine genius is to. Oh, they don't like to hear this. It is to nurture. Not that every woman has to be a mother. No, but there's a natural mothering instinct on some level to every woman. And there's that feminine instinct. And you'll have some people, uh, some men and women, there are exceptions here or there. There are uh, things like that. But this is one of the woke ideologues love to pouring out the exceptions. You know, like, what about hermaphrodites or whatever? Or what about, you know, this and that? Oh, okay. So since, you know, these rare little exceptions exist, therefore none of the norm is valid. No, exceptions to a rule prove the rule. How do you not see this? How do you not see this? So they, th this is how warped their thinking is in thinking that if you show an idealized woman, that this causes all kinds of problems because use that reasoning against them. Well, couldn't you using their own reasoning? Couldn't you say that showing Tila like a steroided out, you know, uh, Hulk herself, isn't that wrong because it's idealizing her in the masculine way. And now young girls are going to think they need to have muscles to be taken seriously. And, you know, I mean, you see, you can play their game and you can just, and this, and they, they would actually listen to you and, and go, Oh yeah, that's right. I mean, they're just like, they. <laughs> it's so easy to befuddle them. I've known it cause I've been in classes, uh, you know, when I was still working on my degrees and, uh, and I've kind of thrown out these little bombs and the whole class is like, Oh yeah, yeah that's really problematic. And it's just, they, 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 it's it's the trickster out of uh, out of control, where all they want to do is problematize. We can't posit any solutions because that would look like we are, you know, essentialists. So therefore, we'll just use some strategic essentialism, and we're seeing that more and more with the, uh, you know, the agendas. This is the world they want to see around them. So they are demanding, demanding that it be reflected in in our fiction, in our myth, and we are going to see that with. Masters of the Universe uh, Revelation, it, it still, still astounds me that they put out, guys, they put out the character designs. They showed you, they showed you what Tila's going to look like for most of the series. And yet, just because they did this little trailer with some of the, uh, you know, the, the animation and some of the classic, classic, again, they're not the classic, but some of the classic colors or whatever, or somewhat designs, and then people are all excited. Oh, I hope it's good. Are you just forgetting what they show? Are you forgetting the synopsis? Are you forgetting? It's not going to be good. It's not. How? People don't want. This is the problem. Okay, so you've got the ideologues. You've got the woke ideologues out there pushing for their, their agendas out there. 
then you've got people who are either ideologues themselves and, and want to see every every race and sexual orientation and, and identity gendered whatever everything you know represented and everything you do have some of those but then the biggest problem is people who aren't necessarily ideologues people who aren't necessarily woke but people who have no self-control and no sense of discernment they 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 whether by nature or by by choice they're stupid they've dumbed themselves down to the point where they don't realize the power of mythology and what mythology should do and they've got this mindset it's just another version it's just another version no these characters affect us individually and as a society mythology has that effect story has that effect the, the mantra of my channel, the message of my channel, how can you not understand this? It's not just another, well, you know, you just don't like that version of Superman, but you know, I mean, you, some people don't like your version. No, the character has essential things about him. And if you break that, it's no longer the character. You can't have a version of Batman that's actually a psychotic inmate in Arkham who thinks that, you know, all of the uh, you know, the, the orderlies or villains and whatnot. No, that's not a version of Batman. That's a deconstruction. That's, you know, at best, it's a what if story. But no, that's not the character. So this idea of the versions, the versions, no, not at all. These characters have essential natures because they provide, because archetypes exist, they, they, they embody specific archetypes and they provide specific functions to society. The specific uh, inspiration, specific motivations. The wokes can't understand that. It started out with them refusing to understand it, and I truly think at this point that they just can't understand it. They literally can't understand it anymore. They've devolved to that point. So we need to keep sh shouting it out. Stand your ground. Don't let them bully you down. They are a bunch of horrible bullies. For all of their, we don't like racists or sexists or whatever, they are the offensers here. They are the oppressors. They are the bullies. They are the ones who will shout you down, cancel you. They they are the ones who will come after you. I can't tell you how many flat out attacks I get on my channel every day in the comments, and I just hide them because they want you to engage. They want you to engage. So you're spending your time there, and, and they can tell you all they think of you. No, they're beneath me. I hide them, and then we move along. Got another super chat here from uh, Demangini. Five dollars again. Thank you very much, Demangini. Uh, Man I. One can make an argument that gender norms are multiple, but there are only two genders. The whole making women look like men is dumb. Yeah, so they'll look, they'll take examples of um, well, what's innately masculine about the color blue? You know, little boys wear blue, little girls wear pink, that kind of thing. There are there are some elements like that that are socially constructed from culture to culture. Yes, in Renaissance times, uh, plus size women were deemed the, the height of beauty because in that culture they were uh they were, they were aristocracy who didn't have to work who, who you know weren't um out in the sun being tanned and all of that kind of stuff and, and were you know rather corpulent at times and whatnot yeah culture is going to determine some slight things in there some slight variances but it's like the just because there are some exceptions you don't throw out the rule just because there are some slight variances doesn't mean you throw out the basic truth of of what it means of, of masculine and feminine exactly See, Schooner Tunis there said, I don't like bullies. Steve Rogers, the real Captain America. Amen. Amen. Um, see, this sound engraver says, uh, talking about this really cool video she did. I did a video on the awful decision to include an 80s song in the Revelation trailer. Yeah, she did a great video on that, and you can click on the link that she actually has in the chat over there uh, to see it. And she's talking about specifically how that's stupid to have an 80s song that has nothing to do with he-man it's 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 making sense it's 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 proof positive that they're pushing nostalgia and not he-man not a good story they're just pushing hey guys remember like 80s and stuff and how that felt and they're like chris farley from saturday night live wasn't that awesome you know that's the extent of their of their allure there but Going into the actual reason that, that Kevin Smith is talking about his producers, like, oh, he he used to play with his action figures to that song, and isn't that cool? No, it has nothing to do with He-Man. He-Man and Thundercats had the most epic theme songs. 
you're a straight up imbecile if you don't use those in any type of cartoon you want to do after that. I mean, some some version of it or something. I mean, those are amazing theme songs. Why would you just disregard that? Even if you're going to have your own, uh, you know, original theme for the cartoon or whatever, if you're actually wanting nostalgia, if you're actually wanting nostalgia for He-Man, then you play that music. Um, you know, and maybe I don't know what the rights were or something like that. But the point is they just use some cheesy 80s song. It, it's stupid. It's ridiculous. So definitely recommend you go check that out. I am um, I'm at my usual hour level here and uh, just running out of steam a little bit, but I want to go into the chat and, and see what else people are saying here. And uh, I think I definitely got all the super chats, but uh, if more come in, I'll definitely read those. But I just want to see what's uh, what's going on here. Spidey Rules says variants are the only arguments they use. I can't tell you how many morons use hermaphrodites to argue why they are multiple genders. Yeah, no. An exception doesn't doesn't discard the rule. No, no. And I'm not a medical expert, but I, my understanding is that even in hermaphrodites, there still is, uh, either on a chromosomal level or whatever, there's actually a leaning towards one sex or the other. Owen Lister for four ninety nine. Thank you. Says two other drawings I'll be coloring are Lady Rose, basically a good guy version of Catwoman. Interesting. And uh, Night Sight. Oh, I like that name, Night Sight. A combination of Daredevil and Robin. That's a pretty cool combination. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that Thundercast song is just so good. And and the 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 uh, the animation for it too. The whole segment, the opening sequence, is just beautiful. It's wonderful. Which was was such a joke on that Thundercats roar when they're like, yeah, we had to go epic with our intro too because, you know, um, <laughs> who, how did anybody working on Thundercats roar think that was okay? It was so laughable when they put that little, uh, you know, behind the scenes video out to try to get people psyched for this. And they were trying to sell it. Like they were, they were really big fans of the original and they were being true to, are all of you just that stone cold stupid? Did, did all of you really truly think this was okay and that would be well received? I mean, that was just the most ridiculous. But again, ideologues, they're, they're not smart. They've dumbed themselves down. Their ideologies dumb you down. They don't allow you to think rationally. They don't allow it. Uh, seeing my sound engraver says, why didn't they show their prize subject matter on the trailer? Are they ashamed? No. Would it tank ratings? Yes, exactly. They were very specific and very purposeful not to show you the bulk of the series in that trailer. They just wanted to use all the little nostalgia bits and the things from what will either be like the first half of the first episode or maybe the first episode at most before the cataclysmic battle and, and everybody gets scattered and there are you know, questions and drama because people are hurt from secrets and blah, blah, blah. And, but it's realistic, right? I mean, people have told me this. Wouldn't it be realistic that, you know, there'd be a pro like Tila would be mad if she found out that Adam, wouldn't that be realistic? And no, no, it's not because this is fantasy. If she's a little miffed, sure. Okay. You deal with that in the space of a few moments or an episode tops. You don't make that this long drawn out soap opera because that's not what it is. And people tried to talk about the, uh, oh, but, you know, Man-at-Arms kept uh, the fact for, that the sorceress was her daughter. Man-at-Arms didn't keep anything from her. He flat out told her in the Filmation cartoon, and this is supposed to be, right, uh, the, the spiritual successor, the, the sequel to the Filmation cartoon. He flat out told her, I can't tell you who your real mother is because I promised that I wouldn't. So it's not like he's lied to her and, and uh, you know, oh, I don't know who your mom is. Oh, I don't know. No, he flat out told her, I can't tell you because of this promise. And she accepted that. So when she finally figures out that it's the sorceress, there's no no logical reason to get mad at man-at-arms. They'll make her, though. They'll make her. If he's not uh, either killed off or, or paralyzed or just made old and decrepit or whatever, uh, she will be angry at him and, and his, his patriarchal blah, blah, blah. He's not going to be honored like the father that he was and, and, and the reason for her for her greatness. No, 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 you can't have that. No woman needs to be beholden to a man. She can't have a man to think for anything. No, sister's got to do it for herself and, and buzz that hair halfway off and, and wear that, uh, you know, ridiculous potato sack and, and, and be a realistic fighter. So stupid. <sighs> so, um, let's see what else is going on here. 
let's lay a plus size in here. Oh, they're talking to somebody else. Great to see you, though. I think Alec Purdue took off, but uh, good to have you around. And Big Al, I did see you. I was in the middle of a roll, so I didn't say anything. I bet, bet you're not here now, though. Bet you didn't stick it out. <laughs> but yeah, he said, I am your onion hater. I did see that earlier. <laughs> Buddy Big Al. Yeah, I was bummed. Usually I chat with him a little bit after each stream of our book study streams on Tuesdays and Thursdays. But uh, last last night I had so much work to do. It's actually why I got to get off here in a little bit here, too, because I've still got uh, an essay to write. Because uh, I just can't get out of school, guys. I can't get out of school. Working on my third graduate degree now. But it's uh, it's good. It's good, though. Probably take a little break after this. <laughs> uh, Private Eye Introspectiva says, ever heard the He-Man theme song with lyrics? It's pretty cool. I don't think so. I don't think so. I'll look that up. Look that up. Samuel Proctor says, the character designers working at CalArts today don't deserve to work at the university, standing on the shoulders of giants like Glenn Keane. Yeah, it's... it's um. You know, there's something to be said that there are different artistic styles that that come after another. And some artistic styles aren't going to be, uh, won't be beholden to the same standards of the previous one. Sure. But something like the Cal Arts style is very clearly, clearly a, again, there's my, 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 uh, my phrase, for this is our word of the day today, is a dumbing down of previous skills. Let's make uh, these characters all basically the same body style. Let's let's uh, you know so, so it's easier to and cheaper, right? Now, you know the the, the He Man filmation cartoon cut corners. I mean, you would see them do the same uh, the same laughs, the same poses, you know, throughout you know each episode to episode because they were working from the rotoscoped you know types and whatnot. But that was due to a budget. That was never them trying to let me just try to do bad art in this scene because it's cheaper. No. Cal art style is absolutely let's make bad art now and try to make that in vogue so that, so that, you know, we don't have to try as hard. It's gross. Yeah. I know Brian Gilmartin, that Cal art style makes me want to puke. I know everybody's like, but Steven's universe is actually really good. If it is, I'll never know because I can't get past the ridiculous art style. The only, um, the only show I ever watched that I don't know if it's really Cal arts, I don't really think it is, but uh, Gravity Falls. That was extremely well written, and he refused to go past the story that he had. He wouldn't linger. They kept wanting him to make more. But uh, I don't know if that would really be Cal Arts. I'm thinking about um, um, who's the main character, the little boy, forgetting his name, D something. But uh, I'm thinking about his face. I don't think that's necessarily a B Cal Arts style. Maybe I'm wrong. It's been a while since I watched it. But uh, but yeah, everybody's like, Steven's universe is great. Eh. I don't believe it, but even if it is, you're right. I mean, who could get past that horrible look? Dipper, thank you. And it was a D, Dipper, Dipper, yeah. So, um, Chris Ken said it's reluctant Cal Arts. It's probably a good way to put it. A good way to put it. I see a lot of variances, though, in character designs and styles. Um, I'm probably going to put a cap on it here in a few minutes, guys. Let's see uh, if anybody has any, any last minute questions and whatnot, because I do have a lot of uh, work to get done tonight. But um, but it was really good chatting with you guys and giving this this little mini lecture or whatever. I didn't know how long it would take, but I think we could cover a lot of ground, a little sub points that I hadn't quite thought of, you know, working through. So, um, so that was good. I will cut part of these out to be their own um, videos throughout the weeks, you know, more digestible bits. And I do have some more uh, heroic inspiration videos to come. Might even elaborate on the guys. Don't watch it. You don't need to take a bullet for us. You don't need to be curious. Don't watch it. And then elaborate that as a video as well. Um, oh, Lister for nine ninety nine. Awesome, sir. Thank you. Reason I'm working on these drawings is because of your channel. Actually, it inspired me to make these characters and color them as a representation of the iconic archetypes, which I will post soon. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, in addition to to looking for um, the classic stories, the classic series or classic comics or whatever. Uh, the other thing to do is make it make it, make it on your own. That's the wonderful thing about YouTube and, and all of the, the wonderful platforms that the Internet's given us is that we are not uh, reliant on Hollywood, our publishers, our television makers. That's why it was so ridiculous to me how it seems so silly that people just ran back to streaming services 
just gobbling up anything they could, anything you want to put out. We're here. We've been so starved during the, you know, the quarantine or whatever. No. Wait, are you kidding me? Starved how? Go look in some other sources and you'll find these wonderful stories. You don't have to, uh, to, to, to just keep getting it from the same source. It's nothing that it's going to be anything but dribble. Well, maybe this time it'll be good. No, 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 no. So that is, uh, that is it for tonight. Nathaniel Zlosbaugh says, you ever think that the Greek pantheon were superheroes in the past, but they too fell into the progressive woke ideologue. Sure would explain Zeus and the gods behavior back then. Um, it's kind of funny. It's kind of a funny story. Maybe you have old ideologues back then. Uh, no, they were, they, they kind of at the same time, but it is, I mean, you know, on one hand you had religious, uh, religious fervor creating somebody like Zeus to be the God of justice, you know, the God of, of deciding what's right and wrong. And yet at the same time, he's also this licentious, uh, womanizing, you know, unfaithful husband as well. You know, um, uh, I think it kind of co-evolved. Co because of their of their concepts of God, gods at that point, but uh, it's a whole different story, whole different uh, topic, but an interesting one, interesting one. So uh, that's it for tonight, folks. I thank you very much for hanging out with me, and uh, I didn't even uh, see how many we had in here. I didn't uh, uh, even right now. It just said my uh, YouTube just says, "Oh, there are four waiting." You know, so it never. Look, it'll be 130 now. So I don't know exactly how far we got up to, but uh, great to see that. Really appreciate it. Thank you all for the super chats, those who super chatted, those who couldn't or didn't or whatever. Thank you for just being there in the chat and uh, being one of the views. I appreciate that. Uh, stay tuned for more. There will be another video tomorrow and uh, more coming out. I am going to try, try to get back to a game stream on Monday nights, but this uh, these assignments that I've got to do for these summer classes are kind of kicking my butt, which is why a couple of uh, weeks I went without it. But we're going to try and get back to that. So, uh Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with me. Have a great night, a great weekend. And until next time, keep enjoying and digging deeper into the hero stories you love.